Have you ever heard of the Battle of the Lys? And I'm not talking about the 1918 battle, but the 1940 battle that took place during the German invasion of Belgium, May 1940. And did you know that it was the bloodiest battle that took place on Belgian soil during the 1940 invasion? And that by the time it was fought, the fates of both France and Belgium were already sealed. Yet, it was fought for something. Why? Is what you're gonna learn in this video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a forgotten World War II battle, the Battle of the Lys. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, my name is Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher, and I like to cover history. Preferably, I do that on location, like right now. I'm here in, in the city of Kortrijk, in front of a monument that is dedicated to the Belgian King Leopold III and his men who stood fast here. Sounds interesting? Subscribe and hit that notification bell. And thanks to Jeroen Bonte who helped me with the research. On the 10th of May 1940, the second German invasion of Belgium started. Troop carrying gliders dropped 78 German paratroopers, the Fallschirmjäger, on top of the fortress of Eben Emile near the Dutch-Belgian border. The Belgian defenders were surprised but did fight back. After a day, the Germans managed to capture the fortress. Other Belgian divisions hastily withdrew to the delay line. As planned, the British and French took their positions on the delay line as well, but because of the swift Belgian retreat they had no time to prepare their defenses. Also their positions weren't as fortified as the ones on the Belgian-Franco border. In order to delay the German advance, the French fought against the Germans in the biggest tank battle up until that point, the Battle of Hannet. After this they withdrew and the Allies held the delay line for a while. The main German attack however came through the Ardennes. As the Germans crossed through the Ardennes, the French became convinced they would turn south in order to attack the Maginot line from behind. So French units were withdrawn from Sedan to the south of the Ardennes. Yet the Panzer divisions of General Heinz Guderian pushed for Sedan. On the 15th of May, the Battle of Sedan was concluded, where the Germans proclaimed victory, which was determinative for the fall of France. Although Allied troops at the delay line had withstood the German attacks, they now ran the risk of being outflanked from the south and therefore they had to retreat. Brussels and Antwerp were captured on the 17th of May. The Belgian government left for Ostende on the coast. On May 20th, the Germans reached the French coast and the fear trap became a reality. The Battle of the Lys was the bloodiest battle that was fought on Belgian soil during the 1940 German invasion. The Belgian soldiers, led by King Leopold III, retreated beyond the Lys River and took up positions here. Now, the statue you see behind me is here in the Belgian city of Kortrijk, which is dedicated to those who fell during the battle. When the Germans had reached the French coast, the Belgians agreed to extend their front so the British forces could make an attack south. On the 22nd, the Belgians took up positions on a front of 90 kilometers. This could have been shorter if they used the Issa River and performed the same trick as in 1914, inundating the land. This didn't happen because Belgian general Michiels noted that this would cause more problems regarding the enormous amount of Belgian refugees. The next day, the Germans took Kent and made between 8 and 9,500 POWs. Early morning on the 24th of May, 12 German divisions attacked the Belgians around Kortrijk. It started with a massive air and artillery strike. Both north and south of the city, the Germans penetrated the Belgian lines. The Belgians fought back and undertook several counter-attacks, but the German bridgeheads across the list remained that day. The Germans attacked at Ronselen, taking the Belgians by surprise. The next day, the Belgians threw the Germans back but suffered heavy losses. On that day, Hitler issued his famous halt order, preventing the Germans from wiping out the Allied forces completely. On the 25th of May, Germans vented their frustration by murdering 86 Belgian civilians in Vinkt. In some places, Belgian soldiers surrendered eagerly. I read that in some places, the Germans were using Belgian soldiers and civilians as living shields, something that also occurred during the 1914 invasion. May 25th marked a fateful day in Belgian history because it was then that King Leopold III broke with his government. His ministers urged him to leave with them to England. However, 
King Leopold, he decided to stay alongside his men and favored surrendering. This would eventually lead to the royal question after the war, but that is another story. When his ministers asked Leopold III what he was going to do in an occupied Belgium after the Belgian surrender, he answered, he did not know, but he was certain France was defeated and Britain would not return to the continent in the foreseeable future. He hoped to save his people from another brutal German occupation. He expected Belgium might have to endure limited independence and German domination for years until somehow the situation would change. He also believed that if he left Belgium, he would never return. The following day, German units threatened to split the Belgian and British forces, but Belgian units prevented this. It was now May 27th and the Belgian front was cracking in several places. According to General Michiels, the Belgian soldiers were fighting stubbornly while their artillery men had run out of rounds and were now destroying their guns so they couldn't fall into German hands. Belgian hospitals were full and countless of fleeing civilians were concentrated on a small area prone to disease and German bombs and Allied aid was not coming. Continuing the fight would lead to pointless deaths and reports of deserting Flemish soldiers reached high command. King Leopold then reached out to the Germans asking their terms. The Germans were plain and simple unconditional surrender and it was then that King Leopold III decided to surrender. The Belgian surrender came into effect on the 28th of May 1940. This battle covered the mass evacuation of Allied troops at Dunkirk. I know there's more to it, Hitler's halt order for example, but that is something for the future. After the Belgian surrender King Leopold III read his final proclamation. Officers, non-commissioned officers and men plunged unexpectedly into a war of unparalleled of violence. You have fought courageously to defend your homeland step by step, exhausted by an uninterrupted struggle against an enemy very much superior in numbers and material, we have been forced to surrender. History will relate that the army did its duty to the full. Our honor is safe. The Belgian government went into exile. King Leopold III, however, remained by the side of his men and was taken prisoner by the Germans. Around 3,000 Belgian and 1,500 German soldiers were killed during the Battle of the Lys. If you like to learn about other forgotten World War II battles, you can click right here. And if you want to learn about the biggest battle that took place on Dutch soil during the German invasion of the Netherlands, well, you can check out the video about the Battle of the Grebeberg. It's right here. I want to thank you for watching, considering of supporting me so I can make better, cooler, and more awesome content for you. Thanks to my patrons. You see their names on the screen. And uh, best wishes from Kortrijk here in Belgium.